Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Yasuhiro Inami, and it's great to be back to speak at this IOSConf Singapore again. Today, I'd like to talk about tidying up your code with Marie Kondo, or code formatter in Swift. <laughs> to introduce about myself, the, I'm the highest orange bar in the gross graph. <laughs> Uh, who is thought to be speaking the most you know, in the conference in Singapore. But actually, this is my second time. So sorry for folks who voted me in this year today. <laughs> so far, uh, this year's conference is awesome, and I hope you enjoy my talk, too. And for my background, I'm now working at a company called Abema TV, one of the cyber agent groups. And, and we developed a higher, uh, hybrid live TV show app and uh, video on demand that is now downloaded for more than 30 million uh, times in Japan. It's about like one quarter of Japan's population. And it's quite huge. We started uh, developing the app since 2016. And it was only four people at that time in the iOS team. And as our service grows, we have now, I mean, the service grows and we have increased the size and we have now 14 people in the team. That also means we have 14 different backgrounds, cultures, beliefs, philosophy, and of course, the coding styles. Such as what language you prefer, whether you like typing or not, MVC, MC, MVC, MVVM, or how about like reactive programming, naming conventions, comments, white spaces, everything is different, you know, individually. And yes, when working as a team, especially, it is very important to manage these different styles because we can't handle every single pattern in our daily work, right? If we try to adapt everything, good things here, you know, like let's use Swift, Objective-C, C++ all together, or let's mix tabs and spaces together, what will happen? Well, that will be a whole war like this image. Yes. We don't want to mix tabs and spaces together at least, right? Does anybody do that before? <laughs> OK. <laughs> but let's, uh, it's a pretty obvious thing, but let's think about it. Why do we care about coding styles, even a tiny program like tabs and spaces? I think it's because Swift is a beautiful language, and we want to write a beautiful code on top of it. We want to write a consistent code, readable code, so that everyone in the team can read it, feel comfortable to write it. So to keep our code consistent, we need some rules to unify our different styles. The very first step is making a coding style guide for the team. Maybe some of you already have one for the team, or may not have yet. Well, coding style is, guide is a great start, but it's, and it's like a Bible that enlightens the team, right? But the problem is, it doesn't actually have a power to fix our code. So what we do is, we use tools like linter and formatter. Swift lint by Realm and Swift format by Nick Lockwood are two famous libraries used in Swift community. And they basically solve the syntactic problem, meaning they can parse and analyze the code, but without type checking. By using these tools, we no longer have to nitpick team members' code anymore, and we can concentrate our code reviews on more important parts only. And that will be a huge win for the team development. But if we look closer to these libraries, both have a little problem with their syntax structures, which are either untyped dictionary tree or token array. Ideally, it will be more powerful if we can use more rich typed tree structure with a modification APIs in it. We want more syntactic information when formatting the code. Instead of just having the array of tokens, we can go forward and have abstract syntax tree, or we often call it AST, like the image on the right, which the compiler uses normally, internally. Since AST is a tree structure and it has a two-dimensional horizontal and vertical, a two-dimensional structure, it has a richer structure than an array, and we can use this to improve our code formatting easier and better. And actually, in Swift, there's already tools for that. If you have ever watched this talk by Harlan Haskins, one of Apple Swift compiler engineers, 
he gave a presentation about RIP syntax in TriStrips New York 2017. RIP syntax offers a ASD level structured editing library, and I just mentioned, and it has a Swift binding library called Swift syntax. In Swift syntax, we can use Swift instead of C++ to manipulate ASD, and it's very easy to use. To briefly overview about this library, Swift Syntax is a type-safe ASD editing library. And what's great about this is, ASD also stores the trivial information called trivia, which are like white spaces and comments that are attached to the reading and trading of the token. Having trivia in ASD means it's a lossless conversion from original source code. So this will be very useful for code formatting. To know more about Swift syntax, it is good to begin with a visual example to help our understanding. Thankfully, Katsumi Kishikawa developed a nice visualization tool with using Swift syntax that was first introduced in TriSwift Tokyo 2018. And it's called Swift ASD Explorer. I would like to show you a demo for this. Okay, can you see it? Okay, it's a web app uh, called Swift ASD Explorer. And you can see on the left, there's a original source code, example source code, and on the right, you see the uh, Swift ASDs here. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, and uh, as you can see, there are like many, uh, oops, what's going on here? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, as you can see, there are like many uh, syntax nodes listed in the right and like many variety, like import declaration, access path, and so on. And if I hover to like uh, this, uh, the end token, it's called token syntax, and it's a terminal node. You can see uh, it's token type, um, token kind, or like reading trivia, text, and tra trading trivia, so that you can examine what kind of comments or white spaces are attached. And this is very, very powerful when you want to make a code formatting. So let's see if I can just scroll a little. Wait, uh, okay. Let's see. So uh, in the left pane uh, here, we have enum and we have a comment. Did you see? And if we bring the mouse here, you see the reading trivia has like four spaces, comments, and line break, and another com uh, new spaces and so on. So. Uh, the reading trivias are like uh, basically like that. And also, it has a trading trivia, one space after the enum keyword. And it has a lot of syntax uh, types that you, uh, yeah, it has a lot of syntax types, but you don't really have to remember everything. All you should do is just paste your code you are interested in on the left and create the ASD by syntax and just inspect that. Like, uh, webs, you know, when you develop a web development and you check the DOM node, right? That's kind of thing. So you can do like this. And now let's try make uh, like writing some uh, code by ourselves. Let's say like protocol, wait, protocol monad, for example. Now you see that uh, protocol declaration is created here. Protocol keywords, some weird keyword and member declaration and empty declaration list. Now let's have func bind, for example. Now you see it, the empty, it's not no longer an empty declaration list, but it also has a function declaration inside. Let's try a more simple version, like one, for example. Now you see it's integer literal, just integer literal. And let's add like one plus. Now the syntax, I um, mean the tree changed a little bit. Now it says postfix unary expression, meaning this plus is now a postfix operator. It's not a binary operator yet. And let's add like space here. Now you see it's an unknown expression, meaning actually this is not the valid Swift code. So that Swift syntax uh, complains that it's an uh, unknown. And let's add like two. Now, unknown syntax is gone, and you have now two integer literals and binary operator plus in between. And let's say x equal, oh wait, oh, I, uh, I like this. 
Now, uh, if I add x equal, for example, the identifier x and assignment x equal is added. And watch this. Uh, if I add like let x equal 1 plus 2, things quite changed a, a lot. Eh? Like variable declaration is added, pattern, uh, pattern binding reads, pattern binding, and so on. So just like tweaking you know, each token, I mean, adding the tokens, you know, you see the ASD gets dramatically changed. And this is quite fun, you know, when you are using this uh, Swift ASD Explorer. And so that's a very brief overview of uh, Swift ASD. And I want to go back to the slide. So we have just seen how Swift code is translated into ASD. And this visualization tool is a very great first step to know more about Swift language, how ASD is structured, so that we can start making our own code format there. And that's our goal for today's presentation. But before moving on to that, you might be wondering, where do these syntaxes, like I had, we had like enum declaration or like statements or expressions, where do these come from? Where, what are these differences? To understand that, I'd like to talk about Swift formal grammar. You can actually find this reference in docs.swift.org. Formal grammar is a set of production rules in the language. We often call this kind of form uh, extended backus narrow form. Here, an arrow is a production rule, and it means can consist of. And it's producing a new syntax from existing syntax. And a square bracket is not an array, and it's just, it's, it means optional. So we start like after with the top level declaration, and the first two lines eventually means the top level declaration uh, is a, consists of multiple statements. And the last one is each statement consists of one of the following like expression with optionary semicolon in it, or declaration with optionary semicolon, or loop statements like while loop, uh, for loop, and branch statement is like if, if statement, guard, switch, and so on. So basically, statements are, can become like declaration, expression, or one of the control flows. And if we write this purely in Swift, for example, it will look something like this, which probably looks more familiar to you. Next, let's take a look at declarations. Here we notice the keywords like import, variable, type areas, func, enum, struct, and so on. These are part of declarations. And in Swift code, it will be uh, just an enum with a bunch of cases. Expression is a block of code that can be evaluated and return some value or perform some kind of side effects. And the production rule will look something like this, a bit more complicated than before, but, and we can see now like try operators and so on. And the Swift representation will look like this. And if we keep digging this production row, we will reach near the end of the node, such as identifier and trivia. And here's the trivia production row. It's, it has like white space, line break, comments, multiple comments, and so on. And the identifier rule goes like this. Basically, it means you, can start, you cannot start from like numeric character. And literal rule, and there are so many kind of substructures in uh, Swift Grammar. And I can't cover that everything in the talk, so I just go ahead. So once we start to understand about formal grammar, we are now able to construct a whole syntax from uh, Swift code. And here's an example of let x equal 1 plus 2. And as I just showed the formal grammar, you can just automatically create this kind of syntax tree on the left. But as we can see, the structure is pretty long and verbose than we expected. Actually, this tree is called concrete syntax tree, and it has a lot of intermediate representation that a compiler doesn't actually need it. So instead, we use a simplified version. It's called a abstract syntax tree. We abstract that, like the image on the right so that compiler runs more efficiently, and it's also easier for us to handle the ASD manually. By comparing these two uh, structures, we find many similarities here, so that we can say ASD is derived from concrete syntax tree, which is actually derived from formal grammar. 
And this is also an interesting topic to learn more about Swiss language. So we now briefly understand how Swiss grammar and uh, Swiss syntaxes are actually produced. Now let's take a look at uh, the example, example of using Swift syntax library. First example, here we have a, a variable iOS conf sg and equals 2019, but with a semicolon in it. Now we want to remove this semicolon. How do we do? Well, it's easy peasy. First, we prepare a subclass of syntax rewriter. Called, let's name it semicolon trimmer. Then, we override func visit and the target syntax type. In this case, we target the code block item syntax because it has a semicolon as a children, a child. Then we check if the semicolon is really at the end of the line. You know, uh, please note that uh, sometimes semicolons are needed in the middle of the line, right? So only check the last part. And if the validation succeeds, we call the method with semicolon and set neo to it to remove the node. And lastly, we call super visit. And this actually calls the ch uh, visit the child and children node. And that's it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Next, let's try adding underscores for the decimal number for readability. Well, in this case, it's just a four digits, so maybe you don't need it, but it's just for practice, so let's try it anyway. To implement that, we will first visit token syntax that is located at the bottom most leaf node. We validate it, its token kind and uh, whether it's actually an integer reader or not. Then we also check whether the text is actually a decimal number or not. In this case, we are not interested in like hexadecimal or bin uh, binary number, so we just ignore it. And if the validation succeeds, then we remove the existing underscores first. Then we go from end index backward to start index, offset by negative three each. We insert the underscores at the right position. And finally, we just update the original <laughs> node with a new result. And that's it. Very easy again. So these two examples are very easy ones that everyone now can practice. But as we get more used to Swiss syntax, we can refactor our code even better than this one. For example, we can like, extract the very nested types into like, move to the extension instead. And we can like, move this code into like, other files you know, for readability. Or this code has two if-else statements that sometimes throw the error immediately. And with switch syntax, we can easily convert if statement into guard statement so that we can reduce the nesting level. And this kind of structured editing can't be easily done using current existing tools. So I think you can now feel how powerful switch syntax is. And to know more about it, it is important to understand about its data types. And here are some important ones such as syntax rewriter and syntax visitors. And these allow us to traverse the AST and make node modifications. Reading and training trivias are also important and when we want to handle them. Like, uh, for example, indent, formatting the doc command, and so on. Syntax factory is a utility class. And it's a one-stop class that we can create any kinds of node from scratch. And lastly, uh, Swift syntax also supports diagnostic APIs. For example, uh, adding the nodes to the highlighted area or suggest fix it to like you should remove this code or insert code or replace that code. And there are many more fun internal parts I want to talk in Swift syntax, but actually I, uh, I will just hand over to Haran's presentation I just uh, mentioned earlier because he already gave a very in-depth talk that I don't have to repeat the same thing again. So I highly recommend to watch his talk and also make sure to check out the Live Syntax documentation. These are wonderful resources to start learning about Swift syntax. And to add more, there are exciting, new, it's exciting news coming up recently. Swift syntax is, is currently in active development and there will be many more performance improvements coming to Swift 5 or later. For example, 
Using source kit with binary tree serialization, we'll be coming to Swift 5, I think. Huh? And in Swift, and according to this uh, Swift forum thread, uh, Argirius Christes, also an Apple Swift uh, compiler engineer, he introduced a C API dialect parser that speeds up the performance even more. For more information, you can find the URL from here. I'm very excited to see these improvements coming to the next Swift version, and let's look forward to it. And from here, I'd like to talk a little bit different, slightly different, but related topic I learned when I use Swift syntax. And it's called optics, which is a functional programming idea to improve the visiting, I mean, the visiting or traversal of Swift ASD. For example, let's say we have a node like this, and we want to focus on certain node, in this case, initializer declaration and modify only its descendant node. Like, for example, in the, these are right parentheses on the like, third level. So we have uh, two, def two levels apart. Uh, we, we want to modify the par right parent. Normally, we can do this by like, memorizing the current focusing state using stacks, and then visit the descendants by calling super visit. And that's fair approach. But stacks are basically immutable states, right? That then we don't want to use too much, you know. So sometimes we want to reduce stacks by visiting children manually. And how do we do that? Well, we can just call it getters twice here to reach to the node and modify it. And then update every parent back to the very focusing point again. So two getters, two setters in this case. And we can write the code something like this. So it's just a two level deep and it's not a big deal, you know, two, two getters, two setters, it's not a problem. But what will happen if the level gets deeper and deeper? Obviously, writing like getters and setters so many times is very messy and cumbersome, right? So in such case, we can use the idea of ranges here. The previous code will look like something like this. You know, you can modify it. The code doesn't change a lot, but yeah. And uh, previous code can be written like this, and please notice the second line here. This is a very uh, key point. We use a custom operator. And this part is called lens. You can think of lens as a pair of two functions, getter and setter. And what this code is doing is it is composing two lenses. So we have one lens for parameters and one lens for light parent. We are combining these two together using the custom operator. To illustrate this, we group the getter and setter into one lens. So we have two lenses here, and by composition, we can create one big lens like this. So it's a deep getter and deep setter, so that we can deeply traverse the node and get back to the focusing point again. And that's actually the whole concept of lens. And trust me, it's a very powerful idea. For example, we can even traverse very deep structure like, wow, such nest, much deep, and you can go back, you know? <laughs> so you can do like kind of this very deep traversal using lens. And we don't have to write like tons of getters and setters anymore. Isn't that great? And this is actually the definition of lens. And as I just mentioned earlier, it's just a composable uh, pair of getter and setter. And composition just works like a magic, and you can do the magic like that, the dodge stuff, you know? So it's awesome. So you now see it, then these are powerful ideas that we can use it in Swift ASD traversal as well. But actually, we can traverse any kind of ASDs only using lens, because lenses are mainly for traversing the struct type, the product type, rather than enum type, the sum type. What do I mean by that? For example, if, we, if the ASD contains the optional node in between, by the way, optional is an enum. We can't really use lenses here. And here's the reason why. Actually, in theory, the previous diagram can be converted like this diagram. And the theory called category theory, don't be afraid, optional type and non-optional type will be split like this. And surprisingly, it will have the opposite arrow in between. 
And that's because of the nature of the enum type, some type. Since arrow points to the opposite direction, we can't use the same idea as lens. Then how do we traverse this gap? Well, we can use the opposite idea of lens. There exists one called prisms. In contrast to lens, which has a getter and setter, prism has two different functions called try, get, and inject, which are actually the opposite of getter and setter. To illustrate that, we have two lenses here, and we have one prism in between. We call this prism sum. If we use this prism, we can now bridge the gap of the opposite arrow. And definition of prism will look like this. It looks quite similar to lens, but if you just look at it very carefully, the every function's arrows, direction, and the structure is all opposite. So we can say that prism is a dual of lens. So I have just introduced two types, lenses and prisms, for traversing each level. And we know how to compose two together, like right? lens and lens, and prism and prism. We can compose these together. But how about in this case? We have lens, prism, and lens. So we need to combine lens and prism together, right? How can we compose these two? Well, it turns out we can use a lapper type called affine traversal, which works like a super type of lens and prism. And by using affine traversal, lens and prism can now be composed together to make one big affine traversal, like this image. And this is the power of composition in optics, and this composition is very important in functional programming. So composition, uh, optics is basically a lens, prism, and affine, affine traversal. And you can think like this three composed together, it's like a, a super move command in a video game or something like that. And here is the definition of affine traversal. It is no more than a pair of try, get, and setter. And it's kind of mixed idea of lens and prism. And it works like a super type. So this was a quick tour of functional optics. By using this clever idea, by composing each level one by one, we can traverse any kinds of ASTs, no matter how deep it is. And you can just use the triple arrow stuff, you know, without calling massive getters, et cetera. And this will be a very powerful idea, too, that can be used along with Swift syntax. And as a proof of concept, I made my own Swift code formatter library for this talk. It's called Swift Relighter. And I open sourced this one uh, months ago. In this library, I use the Swift syntax and optics. So if you are interested, please visit the GitHub URL. And I also use like fun other functional techniques, like uh, functional snapshot testing by point three. So please check it out. So to recap this, we have seen Swift syntax, uh, which is a type safe and lossless ASD editing library. And it's powerful and easy to use. There are some performance issues left, but many improvements are coming to uh, new Swift version 5 or later. So let's stay tuned. And to know more about Swift ASD, using the Explorer app, the visualizer I just showed you in a demo, can be a very uh, powerful tool to start our debugging. We also looked into Swift formal grammar, and we now know how each syntax are structured, I mean produced from the grammar. And lastly, uh, we dig into a kind of advanced topic called optics. And it's a functional traversal. And we saw how this technique can be very useful in Swift syntax as well. So we went through a lot of different topics, which I think are kind of, you know, all mind-blowing ideas, I guess. But uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation, and I hope you can now make your own code formatter. And here are some references for this, if you're interested. And that's it for my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Yasuhiro, tidying up your code with Yasuhiro Inami. Uh, there are two questions. Uh, first one is, how do you do for methods with both Swift and Objective-C? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Swift syntax or Rave syntax doesn't support Objective-C because, uh, as the name says, it's yeah, Swift syntax, right? <laughs> oh, uh, there should be Objective syntax someday. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, second question, any other examples of usage of lens and prism apart from formatting, Swift syntax formatting? 
Okay, so I think, uh, like for example, uh, uh, point, you know point three, uh, the, the, two, the two guys, Brandon and Steven, is uh, doing the functional uh, talks. In the, uh, they are like making a, a Frenzy's a Prisms library. I think it's called Swift Prelude or something like that, yeah. And I'm not quite sure uh, how they use it. They use more on a functional level, you know. Other than I, I made it like a different types, but uh, you can actually make a functional level uh, lens and prism together. And, but I still don't know how they are actually using it. So, but there should be some, like, if you want to just dig the structure, you know, just traversing the data structure, getter and setter, right? So basically that's it. So uh, you can use it in any, any ways, you know, without mute, having like a mutable variable. And that, that, that's the power of lens, actually. Okay, uh, I think that's all. Thank you, Yasuro. Thank you very much.